So today I'm going to show you some tools and techniques that you can use inside of Photoshop to come up with your own custom typography. I recently did a video where I show off some of these tools and techniques, but I thought it might be useful to discuss these a little bit more in depth in their own video that isn't really focused on one singular look, rather a video that's just talking about how you can use these tools and techniques to kind of come up with your own thing. Really, I just want this to be a video that encourages you to get into Photoshop, try some things and come up with something new. To me, that's way more exciting than a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to get a singular look, rather than showing you ways that you can manipulate type to come up with your own unique thing. Everyone has their own spin on things and their own look that they're looking for. So I just kind of want to give everybody the tools and techniques that they can use to kind of come up with something that suits their needs. So with that being said, let's jump into Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop. I've just got some really simple text and a sans serif typeface. Personally, I just really like this look of a simple sans serif typeface, but feel free to use whatever typeface that you feel would be the most interesting for whatever you're working on or just whatever you think might have some interesting effects. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this text into a smart object. This will allow us to apply effects and change them whenever we need to. So if you were to apply a Gaussian blur to this and then you decide you want to add more later, you can do that and you don't have to worry about creating copies or having to go back and command Z or anything like that. It's non-destructive, so you can do whatever you want and make changes as you go. Now, the first tool or technique that I want to talk about in this video is displacement maps. Now, I don't want to go too in depth about what exactly a displacement map is or exactly how it works, but just to kind of give you a rough idea, it takes the luminance values of a PSD file that you have and will shift it either down or up depending on the white or black values in the picture. So let me show you an example of that. So if I go up to filter, distort, displace, uh, you can choose whatever you want. I'm just going to go with 25. That sounds like a pretty good number. As you can see, these are all PSD files, all in black and white. So it's really just taking the luminance values of each of these files and using that to displace the image that you have according to the white and black values, or I guess the grays in the picture. So if I were to select this and then I open it, it is now going to distort the type based on that. So as you can see, this is pretty destructive. So if you wanted to, maybe we could try the exact same thing, but now let's try it at 10 instead of 25. So now you can see it's a lot more legible, but it still contains that chaotic and unpredictable nature that would be really hard to replicate if you were doing this on your own. And the cool thing about this is you can turn just about anything into a displacement map. So like here, uh, if you have some type of glitch or something like that, or right here where you have, you know, a paint texture, or maybe you have some cracked glass or concrete, you can take all of those and create your own displacement maps. So that way you can give your text a certain look. So let's apply this concrete one. So this might be a little bit more dramatic, so it doesn't quite look like cement or concrete. But maybe if we reduce that, let's say five and let's try that again. So maybe a little bit more, you know, if we had an actual concrete texture, it might make a little bit more sense, but it's always just an option that you can kind of play around with. So let's do this and then let's try one of these uh, paint textures. Now you can kind of see here from the original image where it's kind of pulling some of the type. And what I've also done is I've saved it as an inverted image so we can see what it looks like if we were to invert the luminance values where the blacks are now white and the whites are now black. So you, it gives a little bit of a different effect and it affects certain parts of the images in different ways. It's so like you can see here, it really just kind of shifted everything. It looks like it's very textured and worn down. And that's pretty cool if that's what you're looking for. But personally, this is something that I've been using quite a bit lately and I've just been kind of experimenting and just trying different things out with it. Now for these next tools and techniques that I want to cover, we're going to have to make some adjustments to this smart object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a white background. So since we have a white background to begin with, there's not much of a change, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two together. That way they're combined and they're grouped together. Now the reason why this is important is because this is how we're going to get some gray values out of the text. Now that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now, but let me show you what we're going to talk about next 
in order to kind of showcase that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to go to the blur gallery and do field blur. Now this allows you to put different points and you can adjust how much blur is being added to each of these points. So that way, you know, you could have one half that's really blurry and one half that's not. Or, you know, something that I like to do is I like to make some parts more blurry than others. So let's say we're gonna have this side kind of blurry, but we're gonna have the middle really clean. And then over here, it's gonna be more blurry. So it kind of, kind of fades in and out of being blurry and not blurry. Now, because we have the white background, if I were to zoom in here, you can see that it's getting some gray values down here where it's blurring the black text into the white text. Now, the reason why it's important to get these different values is because what we're gonna talk about next, which is the filter gallery. So if I go up here and then I go to filter gallery, we have all these different options that we can use to affect the type. Since we have those black, white, and gray values, we can now make more adjustments inside of the filter gallery that will affect the look of the type. So for instance, we can change the image balance to be a little bit different just to kind of, you know, see what else we can come up with. Now we can get this kind of bold and rounded look where the letters are kind of blending into each other, or we could kind of pull that back where they're kind of thinner and bolder in parts. So like over here, you can see where we blurred it out a lot. It's very thin, but like here where we didn't blur it so much, it's a lot more thick. So if you wanted to make the type more thin on one edge, and thicker on the other, this would be a good way to do it. But you can also mess with the contrast as well. And sometimes that has different varying effects depending on everything that you're applying. But because we have those different values, it gives us a lot more options to play around with than if it was just black or white. Now, if we added the blur without having a white background, we wouldn't be getting those gray values. So the filter gallery wouldn't really have as much options to play around with because it would just be black and the alpha channel, which is nothing. But using the filter gallery, you can come up with a bunch of different looks that would otherwise be hard to get. So like this is a good example where originally, you know, we have like the gray down here. And because of that, we're getting a kind of haloing effect. So if we were to apply a gradient map over this, we could do it where the grays are a blue, the blacks are maybe a dark blue, and the whites we can leave white, and that will have a kind of underwater effect or make it look like it's glowing. But obviously we could mess around with how much of that gray is there. So maybe we only want a slight glow to be shown, so we could do that. Maybe we want more glow to be shown, so we'll add more of the foreground color. So we can just kind of play around with whatever we like. And at the same time, it's also adding a cool texture to the end of this. It's making it look like it was almost scanned in and kind of smeared. And we can even mess around with the different textures that are here. But as you can see, there is just a ton of different options that you can play around with. For instance, it makes it look like this side of the text is sitting underneath a foggy layer of glass. Maybe you took a picture of somebody that's in a steamy shower or sitting outside of a window in which it's raining, this would be a cool effect to add that would help sell the effect of the text is sitting behind that glass rather than in front of it. But really there's so many different options that you can play around with in techniques and it really just kind of comes down to whatever you're feeding into it. So like I said earlier in the video, I really just want this to be something that you can just kind of play around with and kind of find something that kind of speaks to you or that you like that will work for whatever you're working on. But for now, we're just gonna click cancel because there's one more thing that I wanna cover that I think is pretty cool, but is more of just kind of an add on to the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about. So one of the things that I like to do whenever I do this kind of blurry type effect is I will add some noise to it. So if we go up to filter, we go to noise, add noise. So now you can see you're kind of getting this grain effect on the edges of the type, which makes it look a little bit more like it's been printed on something or that it's being distorted in a way, or maybe even falling apart. So if we were to add the levels adjustment and then we mess with the contrast, we can get rid of some of the gray that's kind of falling outside of the text here. So as you can see here, it just looks like the type is just kind of being filtered or blurred but it still has a little bit of texture so it doesn't feel so digital. And since it's on a white background, if we were to just do multiply, we could then get rid of the background. So if we were to make another layer and let's choose a color and we'll just paint something real quick. So you can see completely transparent. So you could add whatever you want behind this and it would still have full transparency and you wouldn't have to worry about 
cutting this or selecting it. And like I said in that last example, you could kind of make it look like it's being smeared or something like that. And to kind of take that idea one step further, I want to talk about another tool that you could use. So this is the color replacement brush. So what I like to do is make sure that this is clean, so there shouldn't be anything here. And I'll make sure that it's sampled on layers. And then I have it an O, and then I have a completely blank layer to use from. So what you can do is if you have a large soft brush, you can click and drag, and you can start to see that it's kind of pulling some of the color from the letters, and you can kind of make it look like it's being smeared or something like that. Now you don't have to make it look this drastic if you didn't want to. You know, like right here might be a little bit more something that you might want to do. But what's good about this is if we were to convert these two into a smart object and then we add some noise, then we're going to get rid of some of this gray here in the background. Kind of looks like it's almost like fading off or being smeared. So even if you weren't to do something as extreme as this, but maybe you want to do a little bit on the top, maybe you want to pull the top of these up and the bottom of these down and then add this effect. So it looks like they had both been kind of smeared away. Maybe that's the kind of effect you're going for and this would be a cool way to do it. And it also adds a little bit of a texture onto the type, which kind of makes it look a little bit more like it was printed off of a printer and not so digital. Now I have one last set of tools that I like to use to edit my text. And then after that, I want to put everything together and just see what we can come up with. And really the last thing that I want to talk about is just some of the distortion effects that are right here in Photoshop. So if you go up to filter, distort, you have all of these different options that you can use in order to mess with the text. So let's try zigzag. Let's just open that up. So as you can see, it kind of makes it look a little bit more wavy. And obviously you can mess with the different options here just to kind of see what else you can come up with. So let's do that. You know, maybe we want something that looks a little bit more organic or like it was sitting on water. This would be very cool. Or maybe it's some kind of flag. But, you know, we can even add on top of that where, you know, let's try the twirl. So, you know, you can make it really crazy like this if you wanted to. Maybe just something really subtle. Let's do that. And right there, you've already changed the text a lot and it looks a lot more unique than it did before when it was just the type itself. But there's a lot of different options here and a lot of different settings. So really, it's just kind of playing around with all of these and figuring out whatever you like and whatever works for the project that you're working on. So now that I've covered all the tools and techniques that I use, let's put it all together and see what we can come up with. So here's where I ended up. I just wanted to put together this kind of poster design real quick, just to kind of showcase what you can do with it. This is definitely not a work of art or a strong poster, but I thought it'd be useful just to kind of see what I've been talking about throughout this video in context. So like I said earlier in the video, you know, now that it's on a white background and you can change it to multiply, now you can move it around, you know, and if this was just black, it'd probably blend a little bit better, but you can put it on top of things. So if we wanted to, we could, put it on top of this image, something like that if we wanted to. And you know, if you even wanted to, you could even distort the type with liquify. So that way it matches the curvature of her face. So maybe it looks like it's imprinted on her face or something like that. It all just depends on whatever you're trying to do. But like I said earlier, because we have all of those gray values and you know, we added the displacement maps and the blurs, you know, we have a lot of different options to use with our text so that we can distort it, get some natural looking edges. So it really just goes to show that there's just a lot of different options and a lot of different things that you can do that you can play around with to get your own unique look. So I just wanna reiterate again, this video is just to kind of get you started, kind of show you some of the tips and tricks and tools and techniques that I use to come up with my own custom typography. But I just wanted to showcase how powerful these tools and techniques can be and show you how to use them so that way you can kind of come up with your own thing. I want you to take this video and I want you to do something that's unique to you and that works for whatever that you're working on, whatever you like to do. But with that being said, I hope this video was helpful and if it was, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and then consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video.